Hi, I'm Rick Kaler. Thanks for joining me. The Tax Cut and Jobs Act that's been in the news everywhere has generated a lot of media hype, much of which is coming from the extreme wings of both political parties and much of which is simply not true. So let's cut through all of the hype and get some perspective on this. First, when he signed the bill, President Trump called it the largest tax cuts in our history. This isn't true. According to a November 2nd, 2017 article in uh, Reuters, the largest personal tax cuts in the U.S. history came from Presidents Warren Harding and Calvin Coolidge, both Republicans. What did they do? Well, in 1922, the top tax rate was 73%. By 1925, they had cut it to 25%. That's almost a 68% cut. Under Presidents John Kennedy and Lyndon Johnson, both Democrats, the tax cuts of 64 and 65 cut the ta top rate from 91% to 70. 21% uh, overall cut. Then uh, the more common, uh, commonly referred to tax cut was the one done by Reagan in 1986, where he lowered the top rate from 70% to 28%. Again, another huge cut. So let's put this in perspective. In comparison, the Trump cuts reduced the top rate from 39.6% to 37 percent. That's 2.6 percent gross or a minuscule drop in taxes of 6.6 percent. Not a lot to write home about. Now the new tax rules do mean some significant changes for some taxpayers. The good news is that if you don't uh, itemize, you're, you're probably going to get a little bit of a win here. And I say a little bit. The standard deduction is going to almost double. It's going from $6,350 to $12,000. And the maximum child tax credit is going to go from $1,000 to $2,000. That's a pretty big deal if you, if you qualify for that credit. But almost nowhere do you read about the bad news. The current personal exemptions are going to go away. So let's do some quick math. For 2017, an individual could take the $6,350 standard deduction plus a personal exemption deduction of $4,050. So if we add those together, an individual could deduct $10,400 right off the top. And then of course, for each dependent that you had, you got another $4,050 write-off. So for a big family, that's significant. For 2018, the personal exemption's gone. The $4,050 is gone. There is a $12,000 uh, write-off, period. Now that's only 1600 more, so they double the uh, 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 standard deduction, but they take away the personal exemption. So it's only $1,600 more in deductions for the two main filers. That's, if you're single, it's 12. If you're uh, married filing jointly, it's 24000 This means a median tax savings of about $192 per person. And that's only if you don't itemize. If you itemize, things are even worse because a lot of what you can itemize has gone away. And you've got to have at least uh, the first $6,000 of what you used to itemize isn't going to help you. So what's going away? Well, the home office uh, deduction and expenses are going away. Moving expenses to relocate for a new job. Casualty losses unreimbursed business expenses, 
Tax preparation software is no longer deductible. Tax preparation fees are no longer deductible. And of course, what hits my particular um, profession is that investment advisory fees are no longer deductible on Schedule A. Now, this tax act has been labeled as terrible for the middle class and wonderful for the uber rich. I don't see either claim being true. It appears to me that the winners, and not the big winners, the winners, are indeed the middle class. Yes, the uber rich also get a small 6.6% .6 reduction, but that's hardly a big deal compared to the cuts of 23% to 73% under Kennedy, Johnson, Reagan, Harding, and Coolidge. 6.6% is nothing. Now the real impact of the TCJA is its reductions on corporate taxes, not personal. Taxes on C corporations are cut from 34% to 21%. Now that's a 38% reduction. You know, that's that's a, a pretty big deal. But what you aren't hearing reported is reducing America's corporate income tax had a bipartisan support for several years. Both parties have agreed for a long time that we need to make America competitive again. The current U.S. rate of 34% is the highest in the, in the world in developed countries making us extremely uncompetitive. The average global tax rate is 22.6. So dropping it to 21% just gets us in the ball game. We're just average with the rest of the world now. And then there are those that attack the fact that big corporations are just going to pass the tax savings on to investors. Well, yes. They tend to forget that 43% of Americans invest in these corporations. And that's including Americans that have 401ks, IRAs, 403b retirement plans. This is a good thing for the profitability of those who are looking out for their future and in saving and investing. That's the real impact of this bill. There's another thing that you probably haven't read. Uh, the new tax law actually raises taxes on small business corporations. Those that have taxable incomes of under 50000 their tax rate is going from 15% to 21%. That's a 38% increase. Now that's a big deal. These, who owns these corporations? Whether or not the Exxons or the Microsofts or the Apples of the world, certainly not. These are corporations that are owned most probable, probably by your neighbor, uh, by the main street business person. So this is a real unfortunate, um, I don't know if it was an unforeseen circumstance uh, or consequence or not. Now, there's somebody that, that uh, is helped outside of just the big corporations. The Tax Act helps taxpayers that are sole proprietors, partners, shareholders of S corporations, LLCs, and partnerships. And these are all entities that pass profits or losses through to be taxed in the taxpayer's personal bracket. The new law allows most of these pass-through entities to exclude 20% of their profit from taxes. Now that's helpful. However, if you are in the profession of law, accounting, medicine, financial planning, or are a professional musician or athlete, the exclusion probably is not going to apply to you. That's specifically true if your income is over 150,000 single and 315,000 as a married couple. And finally, for the 51% of Americans who pay taxes, the TCJA adds 
an unbelievable amount of complexity to an already complex tax code. There's been much said that this particular tax act, and I think it's over a thousand pages. I've, I've more popularly heard 500 pages. It doesn't matter. Do you know how many pages are in the tax code right now? Just under 74,000. So um, it's just not getting simpler. And uh, those that would hold up the postcard and say that they've made things simpler, no. Maybe for a few Americans they have. But for those that really do pay tax, things got a lot more complicated. Thanks for joining me.